transfer case, front and rear gear oil, brake fluid, uh, come on, spit it out, you got it, blinker yeah. fluid, oh. bucket of steam, um, bucket of steam, we, uh, we got to have new muffler bearings, grease canoodler valve, yep, and a conifer valve, and the flux capacitor for the alternator. This one, we might, we're not taking this one to the future, but okay. the next one is going to the future, so we won't need the flux capacitor on this one. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But, yeah. action all right we just wanted to let y'all know before y'all watch the video that you're getting ready to watch we have got some new merch we've got a sticker sheet with five stickers on it you can get we've got new keychains we're doing a price drop on the shirts that we've got because we've got some new shirts coming in so be sure to click on the link at the bottom of the screen to big cartel and go and get your merch and watch this video check it out watch it all the way through uh you know, yeah. it might have a few boring spots, some ups and hills Who and cares? downs. Watch and stuff, but just watch the whole video. It'll be worth it. Sit down for dinner tonight with your family and watch it. You'll enjoy it. Just keep liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. Tell everybody about it. We got some, uh, we got some big plans for the future. We hope we can get them all come together. Thank y'all. Watch it all the way through. <laughs> you sure? I want you to share it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. I think that's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, but why is it on the ground? Tell tell the audience why it's on the ground. In such a fashion. You see, kids. Sorry. All right, so we set this bad boy on the ground because it was in the air. And when it's in the air, your shackle and spring, and all that is attached is shifted forward. So we was gonna have to pull it over to attach it where we're gonna attach it because of this arm we're starting over here on this side so we can match it on that side. But see this arm right here? That's got to be there no matter what. Ge the geometry's got to be there, so we can't change that. So the shock's going right here, which is a normal spot for a lot of things, a lot of builds. So we was going to have to pull it over, and we were like, all right, we should set it on the ground so it wouldn't be in so much of a bind when we do pull it over because... It's not going to be, the only time it's going to be in the air is if you jump it, you know what I'm saying? Or you pick it back up on a lift. That's it. That should be it. So it's already shifted back a little bit. So when we put the shock in, it's not going to be such a detrimental yank, if you know uh -huh. what I'm saying. So. It's all the spring location. Now that it's on the ground, it's, it's, it's further back. So less yank. But... The reason why we got the tires off is because me and a tire, there's the, it, there's not enough room for the both of us in town. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
See, look at that. That's a lot easier than than where it was going to have to happen. Because all I did was pull it over just ever so slightly, and and you can still move this up here by hand, and you couldn't do that with it hanging in the air. Yeah, that top bolt wasn't gonna come out with the angle it was. With but the now drink. the only uh, the only tough thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna before we tack it, we're gonna make sure that the steering arm clears. So that's our that's the only thing we have to do to make sure of it. So oh, wow. But you know, it's just crazy because once you do one thing, you gotta think about the other thing and how you're doing it now and why you was doing it why you was doing it the first time. When you're making stuff not what it's supposed to be, you just you gotta think outside the triangle a little bit. Forget the box. So Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. The box. You know, people say think outside the box. Yeah. Well, we're not even working with a box here, so. I mean, it is a box, actually. So you gotta think outside. What I'm trying to say is you gotta think out, you gotta do stuff differently. I'm running out of steam here. You're really making me mad. I don't know. This is what we're doing. If you don't like it, take a hike. Kick rocks. Take a long walk off a short pier. Wash your greasy self. <laughs> I'm gonna see something. Let me see something. I'm gonna see something I ain't never seen before. Seeing something gotta open your eyes and see it. Alright. Ta, I'm gonna do one more thing and come back. When we come back, we'll be joining these two in marriage. Seth and I have finally finished up the shocks here. Uh, they were, I think we had said last time we had run into, we had to redo them. We had got the passenger side done, everything was nice. And then we came over here to the driver's side and we remembered this horseshoe pitman arm here. And the problem is, <clears throat> the way this fan is, there was pretty much nowhere else we could mount the top shock mount other than the stock location. Because normally on the G Series vans that we do, we put them here on the uh, on the, frame. the unibody frame rail part. Well, had we done that, we would have only had a shock this long. It would have had no travel whatsoever. So it had to go up higher in the fender well. And the way the stock mount is, they have this uh, reinforced section here already made. So we went off of that. And then once we did that, there was no other place on the differential to mount the shocks other than here on the knuckle, which is fine. I've seen a lot of uh, off-road vehicles do that. But what we had done on that side is we mounted the shock down on the axle tube because it had plenty of room to do it on that side. Well, when we came around here, not thinking, we couldn't do that here because of this pitman arm. So we revamped it and mounted them here on both sides, had to change that one, but we've got, you can see now we're close but we're missing everything, not hitting anything at all, and the shocks are in the right position, they're gonna work fine. And we had to uh, had to do a lot of research finding the right length shocks because we had a certain criteria that we had to uh, work with with the length because you can't call a shock company and say, hey, we've got a four-wheel drive 67 G-Series van. It just don't exist. So anyway, we got that done. Uh, we've got just about everything buttoned up on the motor. We're waiting on... Um, uh, transmission cables and uh, transfer case cable. We had to we had to get a 12 foot transmission shift cable to shift the transmission. Uh, the longest uh, cable we could find for the uh, transfer case was uh, 10. I think no eight eight foot. I believe no 10 foot. I'm sorry. We did find one 10 foot, 
and we are hoping that's going to be long enough. It's going to be close. Go. Okay, what I am doing here is trying to fabricate some kind of mount. Uh, this is the transfer kit case shift cable, and we've got to have it mounted here. So I figured out a way to attach it up here to the uh, linkage, the factory linkage with the little heim joint. So this is one of the bolts that hold the steering column in. So my plan is to take this, whoa, <laughs> is and bolt it in that bolt hole that was there. Right. And then weld this. This is the right. It's got the right diameter. Right diameter. Weld that to that so it'll give us a place to run this through to give it a solid mounting point. So cool. I got you. I'm gonna work on that and see if I can make it happen. Well, we got Ethan and Ivan finishing up some kit stuff. This morning I painted the shackles here that'll go out with the kit. Uh, and we are gonna be knocking out a bunch of stuff on the 67, hopefully. Boy. What a contraption. Right, yeah, this is, the little, this is the little bracket I came up with to uh, I'm calling it a dim whim. mount the cable. <laughs> what it'll do, this will bolt, this bolts to the uh, frame and right. then the cable will go through this. It's Correct. just, it don't need a lot of, it just needs to be stationary. No big deal. Let's see, uh, that is top notch fabric Oh yeah. Once he gets too welding on it and grinding, it'll look like Yeah, they brought this to me. Like something I'm over here doing something. <laughs> I ain't over here doing that. <laughs> Okay. Does this does this wind bin need to uh? How? One how thing you much? gotta do is be able to allow the bolts to go through these holes. You got a patent on that, or? I think he's got like CAD software in his head. Oh, he okay. It and then just, <laughs> he just he made it in his head. And then, All right. Uh, okay. It's a half inches. <laughs> half inches. Half inches. Is it half inches or what? Yeah, it's half inch. Yeah. yeah. Because he sticks a bolt through it, to that way the slag don't get down in the hole. Thank you, Seth. That's my star pupil. I mean, be on it. What do you What do you think about something like that? Really? I mean, <laughs> wow, that's good. But I tell you what, it's thick, so I'm gonna try to. This is unique. This is gonna look wild. I'm trying to make it the nicest beads you ever seen on a little whim den like this. <laughs> we can buff it out. Oh yeah. You got some nice peaks and valleys in there. To... I know it don't have to be, but I'm gonna. It's gonna be a bra hard. No, <laughs> yeah, <dude. I'll>, uh, <laughs> I stopped everything I'm doing over here, so I'm. Oh, did to... product kit on production on kits have just come to a grinding halt? Yeah, th this this thing is. Insane. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, all right. I'll check back up with you later. Wait, wait. I mean, here, just take the pliers. Which way you gotta put it on? Let's just stick it on the freezer. <clears throat> Fabrication station, bud. I wasn't even born in 67. I was born two years later. That was eight. That's when the world changed forever. Neutral and in four low. Oh man, that's gonna be perfect. Cause look, there's your too high. Oh, that's perfect. Nice. Right. That works. Yeah, and then it'll well, come. Do it again, Ivan. Huh? What it'll do, you want to come back? Well, that's Ethan up there, but come yeah. Ethan. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Come back here, Seth. All right, shift it, Ethan. All right, that's that's the way it'll do, and then we will we will mount this here. To all right, do it, Ethan. That's all the way down. All right, pull it all the way. 
All right, so that'll be all it'll right. Be mounted there. It'll be mounted there. Now go through the. Uh -huh. And that'll. There's one. That's all the way down. All right, so. So wait. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll fabricate another mount off of these bolts, probably to hold this, to put it right there, and cool. and we'll shift it through. Good job on those welds, bud. Huh? Good job on the welds, bud. I like that. Come here, look at it. Oh, that. I don't look bad. See, I can never see it. To a red. That looks good. Neck. That's high dollar. Mama. Hmm? <laughs> well, I think it. Where is it at? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Good. Yeah, boy. End of time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. To the end of time. <laughs> Sure. All right, you're live. What you got? Light. Come here and hold the light, Ethan. That's what I'm good for. I'm on the way. All right, what we got to do, I've already cut this off. Okay. This is the shift, the shifter for here. And the reason I cut this off, it was right here because our hind joint has got a bolt back here like this. Okay. Well, it... The back of the, the head of the bolt's hitting this. So, what I did, I'm gonna cut that off and extend this higher to get it up past this piece here. So when the cable comes in like this. But the only problem is these things are calibrated and we didn't know if it was gonna work anyway. The clicks here have gotta match the amount of, the way the clicks do on the shifter. So in other words, right. if, it, if the shifter moves, say this far to go to a click, this has to move the same amount to go into the click. So changing the length of that's gonna change the throw. The click. You remember the first van we did? Yeah. We put the uh, we used a Chevrolet 208, but we put a Dodge shifter yeah. in the floorboard. Yeah. Remember, I had to get I had to make this the same length as the Dodge, Dodge. one to work with the amount. So. When I put that on there in a minute, it may, we're gonna have to see if the clicks are calibrated with each other. Okay. So it's gonna be some trial and error. I think we've got it figured out. We had to uh, change up the way we were doing it. Uh, with the length of this, the where it had to be, there was no way we could get it mounted back here because we would have had to mount this way. When it got down to full low with this lever down here, the cable would have had to go down it from this angle and we couldn't do it that way. So what we did is we went in front. So instead of the shifter being in part, but being in too high, all the way down at the bottom is too high. But if you'll shift it, Ethan, you can see it goes through all the gears. We've got too high. Two highs all the way down. Yep, come on down to four. All right, there's four high. One more clip. All right, that would be neutral, but the brakes are engaged on the back. Now go all the way to the bottom. Oh, I started at the bottom. Anyway, there's two high. Go all the way to four low. And there's four low. So okay. we got all the uh, all the clicks, and you can see it up here. Come up here. This is the stock shifter, all right? Go to go all the way from four low to two high. There we go, and it's all done with the uh, stock shifter up there. Oh, the shifter. Uh, hey. Mark, yeah. No. Like I said, we probably would have, if we could have done it, swapped the shifters around and had the. Uh, four-wheel drive shifter in the floor and a transmission on the column, we would have done it, but being that this was a two-speed power glide and we're going to a four-speed overdrive, there just was not enough in the stock shifter to make that happen. So we did it this way. I think it's going to be cooler anyway, especially the way Ivan's got in mind to make the uh, console. Oh, man. So I ain't even got a clue yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've been thinking about it all weekend, really, and I, I did get some some wood from Dad. It's gonna be pretty good so
だらだあだらだらだらだあああね What's happening, bud? Da da ah. Oh. Just trying, failing. No, I'm just making me a small pattern so I can go cut my wood stuff out and construct. You ever made a uh, console out of wood for a van before? Never before, ever. First time. First time. Well, what are the steps? Step one is, t well, step one for me is I'm gonna get the shape of this right here. This, this kick up. So when we set the console down, it'll fit nice and in that groove right there. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, the first step is I'm gonna get the shape of that um, and then put this on an actual pattern. It's gonna be the actual size of one side and do two sides the same out of wood. Uh, well, yeah, of course. And then just, um, just the other two sides will be dictate when I get that done. And then the top will be done off of this. Of course, this will go back in. Yeah, that's the top. That'll of the be nice and shifter there because this indicates what's yeah. what to on the side there. But it, it'll it'll look like. I mean, it'll essentially look like this. But it's gonna be out of wood and fit in the floor, and I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to do a little number like this and we'll turn all the gauges where you can read them like this. Or yeah. Like this. And be like. Right. They're gonna be like this kind of hidden. And I'm gonna try to make it where you can um, unhook this, lay it to the side, take your box off. Gotcha. Fabrication. What's happening here, bud? Oh, uh, we are taking the valves out of the heads on these things so I can clean them. And I'm just trying to keep everything in order so they can go back in and let it Um, seats were rock hard and needed replaced, and everything's disgusting, so we're just trying to clean it and pretty nice. Pretty nasty stuff. Probably wouldn't even be recommended to go back with these heads. I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what's going to happen. Heck Someone yeah. Been working on a little bit of that in the background. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, Carpentry City over here, bud. Consoles coming together. I'm doing this in a metal shop, so it's there's a lot that I ain't got. <laughs> I mean, you know it's saying? coming along, and it's tight in here. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. <laughs> This is my homemade valve spring tool that I made probably 15 years ago. It's like you're doing the job. Flat bar and vice grips. It to works. Watch out, because this may get crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it another one stuck very bad? It ain't happy. Golly, now that. 
that valve seal there is very crispy. 11 herbs and spices, bud. She's Kentucky Fried. She's Kentucky Fried. <laughs> yeah. Hard. Don't worry, it'll be okay. Yeah, this is the kind of the way this works here. All right, yeah, let's see this thing in action Take one the more time. Trip. Okay. You clamp the valve closed. Okay. Take this old girl here. And yeah. Pop! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, them things, they're stuck in there pretty good. Yeah, I bet somebody in the machine shop is cringing right now. See, if this was a Harley, we would have been done here. Yeah, we've been on. We've already been done. <laughs> well, you got to do this twice, did you? Twice, did you? Do. Don't worry. That cam will fix all. Oh, yeah. That brand new camp? <laughs> yeah, dude. Might as well have rebuilt this motor. Yeah, I love that we... <laughs> I'm going with like a brand new cam. <laughs> all that good stuff. Reusing all this crap. That's Chevrolet. Tried and true. Tried and true. I mean, it works oh, so good the first time. Why not use it again? This thing will run forever. Well, it's just like Bob Seeger said. Like, like a rock. A rock. <laughs> like a dang rat. So I got it rough cut out and rough mocked up and now I'm rough sanding. <laughs> Golly. So, it's going to oh, be good. sweet. talking about it last night how is it with a woods craftsman as yourself having to use metal fabricating tools to fabricate something out of wood i'm doing actually i'm doing all right it's uh oh never mind <laughs> but she's getting there. oh wait a minute yeah i gotta uh oh yeah <laughs> hang on come here and i'll show you what i got Going in. Yo. You just kind of fitting it flush to the floor. Yeah. Just a little bit better. And that right there is a lot better than she was. That looks cool. And then gauges will mount to the side of that and all that yeah, good stuff. We talked a, about that before. A poplar swip top that goes down it and nice it disassembles you know flip it up unscrew nice so. and whoop oh, yeah and while all that's going on i think i filmed a little bit last night of us playing with the motorcycle uh we got the motor mocked up in there uh, I'll have to take all the bolts back out and put Loctite on them. But other than that, it is mounted where it needs to go. Uh, being this was a custom hardtail, some things had kind of shifted around. One thing is this motor mount. Everything else bolts right in, and we kind of figured that out as we went. But our problem was this motor mount here. Stock ones wouldn't fit because I think they re-welded these tabs or made them smooth. So... While we're waiting for Ivan to finish up his job, I've been painting this last little bit of the kit, and we've just been chopping up different little pieces, trying some stuff on the motor mount, but I had to do something to get this thing underway. Oh, you're trying to flush it to the... Yeah, but... Yeah, you know what you got. 
Yeah. It's looking good. You got that midday coffee? Yeah, and I needed it bad. So. Woo -hoo. I'm getting close. We're getting close. I, uh, Ivan is fabricating the uh, shifter. I have. Uh, Might have to speak up a little bit. I got the wire, the alternator wired up. It's, uh, it's a new style. CS130 GM alternator. Okay. And it had been a while since I wired one up, so I redone it. This thing has got to have <clears throat> a light or a resistor wire in it, I guess, for the exciter wire. Okay. Uh, but it is the way it works, I guess, when you turn the switch on, uh, the light comes on, it's wired to the alternator, and when the vehicle cranks, Good. We've got to get the uh, exhaust kit ordered, put the exhaust on it, and we're pretty much we're pretty much done. We got to mount the seats in the rear. Uh, we want the seats in the rear for the kids and the, uh, the seat belts in them, and then uh, we'll start test driving. We got to wire the uh, the gauges up. Finish getting them done when Ivan mounts them on the. Uh, they're going to be mounted on the. Uh, console here because there's nowhere on the dash really to mount them because uh you know if he did want to put a radio here that's where that would go but once if you surmount them here by the time you go out through the not even a firewall but the front and then come back to the motor there's not enough especially on the uh temperature uh gauge there's not enough uh to make it back there so yeah. I think they'll look better here on the um, console anyway. We'll be able to run right straight to the dog box. Yeah, we're uh, we about got it. And I know y'all are getting tired of me saying it. it. It's been it's been a rough. One. It's uh, but it's there. We it, 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 it it's fought us, but it ain't gonna beat us. So we got. It. Well, here, crank it up one more time. tweaking on the carburetor we haven't touched that carburetor it's a brand new carburetor and all we did is, is bolt it on so it it runs that good just bolting it on i haven't even uh adjusted the timing right that's just set by ear so we get all that stuff tweaked it's just no water in it yet so well uh i think it's gonna be good it's gonna it's gonna be uh it's gonna be plenty of power for this little van i can tell you that yeah because it's a it's a house of a little motor <laughs> it grabbed, didn't it? Now that, uh, a metal, a, me a metal bit. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I've got. That's all I've got. <laughs> now that was the gnarliest burn out here. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? What do you say, What do you say, shot dog? New shop dog. New shop dog. Additional shop dog. Shop dog 2.0. Shop dog squared. Hey, quit that. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, dude? Ah! 
put the wheels on there so we can take it outside. Ah. She's going to move under her own power this time. Hey! <laughs> I know what's wrong with it. <laughs> it ain't got no gas in it. Absolutely. Oh gosh. Dude, that looks cool. It's coming along. It's coming along. That looks nice. That'll be cool, man. Well, do y'all want to see shit put out? Yeah, let's see what, uh, let's see if she'll bust a move. Just a tooch more. Yeah. It swallowed her. Well, she's, a, she's a little low, but we'll take it. Good to know she'll move. That torch converter said, You got a dead more. Moving syrup. We got a few old lubrication stations. Yeah, uh, stick that thing in my face and I'll, I'll freaking bite it off. <laughs> <laughs> Good sign. That's yeah. a success. Good sign. Much success. Can't wait to go down the road back there. That's gonna look cool, man. Oh, I know that. <laughs> I got you in cinematic mode, talking about high definition for this one. I am done. Done. The baby is passed on to grow up and be sheltered and nurtured and taught to somebody else, because I'm done. Mm -hmm. I done my part. Because it was a few, about a four day no wood tools, except a yeah. saw and a jigsaw and this or that, and some sandpaper. Dude, that is cool. But I think it looks pretty good. It's a poplar top. Poplar top. Nice oak, everything else. And I think it come out pretty good. I dig it, dude. I kind of want to build one now in my car. Yeah. But I hope he likes it, and I hope 
everybody else does too. I guess we'll run the wires next, get her all hooked up and. Oh yeah, she's ready to, she's run back through here and this is gonna be hooked up um, and that's it. Hooked up, screwed down, that's it. Live, bud. Now you, just, you need to talk. You're the one that says I always talk. Go ahead, dude. Well, you just, you just ruined your it. time to shine. Here's the freaking thing. He's gonna do it. Dang it. <laughs> Darn. There's the console, all did up and lit up. I tell you what, I haven't did a, I haven't did a good job on the ship. Congratulations, bud. Hey, thank y'all. Appreciate it. Boy, she looks good in there. I tell you what, it really does. It does. It really, really does. Yeah, we still got some neatening up to do. We'll, we'll get the plug wires neatened up and the, the new wire and harness and stuff neatened up under there. But it's, uh... Yep. We're ticking away yet. We're, we're, we're chunking away, chunking away. Now we got to uh, get the exhaust routed and done and... Uh, We'll probably be pretty close to where we start test driving it. Oh. I'm gonna get on out of there, man. That's tight spots. Tight spots. All right, what are, what are you gonna do? Me, I'm gonna stand by until I'm needed. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sorry, I'm singing. It don't sound good to y'all, but I'm <laughs> rocking out. <laughs> Just bolting some seats in. Easy All right. Get it out of there. Huh? I put the bolt through the, that hole that I uh, put the punch through. <laughs> <laughs> Still in there. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, it's not coming through the car. Could you see where it came through? Yes. Can you see the hole in the carpet? Yes, Commander. <laughs> I put the bolt through that. Putting the bolt through the hole in the carpet. Are you able to see the carpet? Affirmative. <laughs> Awaiting further instructions. Try to put the bolt through the carpet. Please work with me. All right, you got it. Here, what? Well, you can put thread the carpet it. back down. What? Put the car. Hello. <laughs> put the carpet back down. I'm not on that one. All right, that one's through. Through? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's, That's how we'll do, man. Tail gunner, I need another bolt. Gas in I see that. Yeah, we're gonna pull it out uh, and go ahead and put the water in it and let it run a while, see if we got any leaks, make sure it doesn't run hot. Uh, we've got to add back some transmission fluid. I think we said in the last one that we had we had a leak around where the uh, kick down detent cable went into the side of the transmission. So we put another uh, gasket on that or grommet, whatever you call it and uh, probably we'll have to add a little bit more transmission fluid to it. So we're getting close. We've got the uh, exhaust stuff should be here possibly this afternoon, tomorrow, ordering brand new exhaust to put on it, get it done. And once we get that done, uh, I think we should be start, or start driving it some and check it out. Put it around, see what she do does. Check down stuff on it and see what happens. Uh, been a long haul, man. We just got to make sure everything we did is right. 
I, I gotta I gotta run it up through the works. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll uh. We got power now. Yeah. Power now. Now we. Yeah, we got power. We got power. Power. We got power now. You need help? Well, I sure ain't gonna sit here. <laughs> <laughs> help, help, man! Up with you. Um. I don't even know if we said this in the last video when we when we mounted the gauges up here on the uh, console. The way we had to run the line, it's so far back to where the stock location, or the, not really, I guess, stock, but where you normally put the oil pressure sending unit uh, on a small block shovel. So we didn't have enough line because we bought a copper line instead of those plastic lines. So what we did is we tapped into the uh, location down beside the oil filter to get the uh, oil pressure. So this is the first time we've cranked it up since then, so we're just going to make sure there's no leaks on it. Uh, we're probably going to have to add a little bit more transmission fluid to it when it to move. So we'll see what happens here. Nothing in the way? I don't think so. See the oil pressure going up here on the gauge? exhaust on her. Yeah, well, I ain't as worried about that as I am sitting in it and it barreling right up through here in a blow shop and a closed fan. Feeling pretty good. <laughs> Cut up. We're gonna get some water in it and uh, just pour some water in, let it run a while, make sure it doesn't run hot, and make sure we don't have any leaks. And uh, we'll go from there. You filming? Oh, yeah, we're live. Yeah. I always fill them up with water first instead of antifreeze because if you have a leak, you don't want to lose your antifreeze. You can drain the water back out and put antifreeze in it. Once you find out you're good on your, not leaking anywhere. So far, it looks like we're doing pretty good. I, I, my concern was that uh, the sending unit going into the intake for the uh, manual gauge, it didn't feel like the fittings that they sent with it were getting good and tight, but so far I'm not seeing anything. Probably haven't got it to that level yet though. If it sucks it down in there, we'll be able to cut it off. Good. It ain't even tightening up. Oh shoot! Is it just a regular little line clamp? Yeah. 
All right. We got uh, gasoline dripping here. There was water leaking, but I couldn't tell if it was um, where it was coming from. Did you record that? A little bit of you fixing it, yeah. Yeah, well, we had a hose clamp that had just, uh, I mean, we, we got to the point, sometimes when you tighten them up, they just, like they strip out. And that's what was happening on that hose clamp. So. Got her, got her did though. Back in minutes. like it's working the thermostat looked like it opened and closed okay but we got the uh the petcock on the uh, radiators leaking a little bit the heater core is leaking so we are gonna I can't um, reach it <laughs> we're gonna go to lunch let it cool off come back tighten that up check it out we'll crank it up again and let it run through and cycle and i think we'll be good to go how you feel about it there yarber feel pretty good once we tighten up all the leaky squeakies talking um, yeah i think we should Ride it around. Yeah, bud. For a moment. Yeah, that's why you don't put antifreeze in it. Because if we had put <laughs> antifreeze in it, that's what we would have been losing our antifreeze. That would have been like $20 in antifreeze. Exactly. We'd have made like five grand. <laughs> five thousand dollars Five thousand dollars Good to see the gauge is working though, man, uh, in the thing. I know, man, that looks so cool. What? I dig it, dude. Yeah, I know. All right, That's this is- Big yeah. box. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something. This is the exhaust kit for the uh, 67. We've used these kits on several of our builds. It comes with two Flowmaster style mufflers, uh, four 48 inch straight piece pipes, four 90, p 90 degree bins, four 45 degree bins, and four 180 bins. But Speedway Motors, I think, is in Nebraska. Oh, Nebraska. I, I ordered this stuff yesterday afternoon, and it's here today. So, Speedway so, is the way. <laughs> Yeah, that's Let's pretty, get this thing That's out. a pretty good speed. Yeah. And there it is. This is a kit. This is a it's two and a half inch kit with like I said, it's got these chambered mufflers, actually, in my opinion, I think they may sound better than Flow Masters. Uh, but we've used these on several, several builds, and it's it's a thing you can do when you don't have a pipe bender. Uh, you can buy a kit like this and just take these bins. You have to do some cutting and and figuring and stuff and welding to to get it, but it usually works out real good. It usually looks good and clean and. 
plenty of stuff to uh, put it together. They actually have got the pieces made where, you know, you don't really have to weld it. You can just piece them together and put clamps on them, but we always uh, cut them and weld them because you never know how many bends you're going to have to cut or how you're going to have to cut them. I mean, you may have to do some stuff like this and that. And, you know. right. Soon that'll be a exhaust kit for a van. Yeah, it'll sound good. It probably, <laughs> if it was just a regular old stock motor, we probably would have went with just two inch exhaust, but being that that motor's what it is, we figured two and a half would be better. So help it breathe. Which is what exactly? What was it? What did you determine what what, what it was? What? That motor in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 572 alcohol injected blown big block Chevrolet. Okay, now what is it really? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is actually, uh, I thought it was a 383 at first, but I think it's actually a 350 board 30 over with aluminum heads, good flowing heads. All right, yeah, that, that's going to knock out this video. The next, uh, I guess the next one you see, you'll see us putting the exhaust on the van. Uh, I think it's going to be all right. We checked everything. It seems to be uh, not running hot, no leaks other than just the petcock being open and uh, a little issue with the heater coil, but we'll get that worked out. And uh, I think Seth is getting ready to go start doing some editing, get this thing ready. Y'all just be sure to like, share, subscribe. As always, check out our buddies at OK Recycling down in Burlington. Go check out their eBay store. Go to their website. Check out all the stuff that they have. Uh, if you need any stuff, you know, want to uh, sell some stuff, big, anything, anything from generators the size of this shop all the way down to a brass screw. They got it and everything in between. So check them out. Check out uh, Renegade Tees. They're working on some new t-shirts for us right now. Be sure to go to the uh, Big Cartel link at the bottom of the screen and get uh, get some of the new stickers we've got, a keychain and the shirts. And uh, like I said, just keep doing what y'all do and we'll keep doing what we do. Thank y'all, and uh, we really appreciate all the new subscribers. This last week has been amazing. We've almost got a, a thousand new subscribers this uh, last week. I think uh, today's Thursday. It looks like if we keep going the rate that we're going, we'll hit 5,000 subscribers by this weekend. So thank y'all. Just keep doing that. We appreciate it. Three hundred fifty-five cubic inches. So thirty only gives you five cubic inches. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, what the heck? I mean, that's that's a lot, really, if you think about it. If, you know. I am thinking about it. It's more, more, more space to get more fuel and air in. Well, I know how that is. I just didn't know that I that was the equivalent of. Yeah, it's not much it's like if, if it was a 383, if it was a 383, it would be a 350 board 30 over and a 3.7, a 400 stroke crank, which would be a 3.75 inch stroke, where a 350 is a 3.48 stroke. So no more bore and different crank. Yeah. The only, yeah, the only thing that gives you cubic inches is bore and stroke. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is your lesson in inches. Did you like that? <laughs> Pretended not to know nothing. <laughs> 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 no, I really, I don't know. I didn't.